Chosen ones, where you are, where you are, where you are. Chosen ones back with another powerful and productive video, right? Great. Um, let's do it really quick, okay? Yes, let's do our smiling exercise. Yes, that is so beautiful, chosen one. In this video, I'll be sharing with you 12 things you got to do as a chosen one that will change your life completely. Okay, right? So make sure you watch the entire video without skipping any portion of this video. Oh, yes, and I tell you, your life is never going to remain the same. Right? So stay tuned. I know there are people that, you know, they can't watch to the end because in this life, about 95% cannot... Um, finish what they've started that is why only about five percent of people succeed in this life oh yes because people always meet the latter part of things oh yeah that's it many people they can't be consistent they cannot be trusted that's it and i know you are someone that can be trusted so you are going to watch this video to the very end all right chosen one so point number one be careful of what you take in. What you take in can change your life and it can doom your life. Oh, yes. And when I'm talking about what you take in, I'm not only talking about food. Even though food is part, you know, our body is an electrical system and the body needs to be charged all the time. Yes, if you don't charge yourself with what you take in, you are going to be dead i'm telling you you are going to be a living dead you are going to be slave all the time in life that is why you got to oftentimes charge yourself by what you eat right you know that the food we take in certain food can charge us electrically and help us to raise our vibration and certain food that we take in can make us sluggish and make us very dull and quench our fire I'm telling you, there are food that when you eat, it will quench the fire that is in you, the zeal that is in you, the radiant that is in you, right? That vibrance, you know, and the motivation to get stuff done, right? You're never going to have that motivation depending on the food you eat. And there are certain food that when you eat, you are going to be very vibrant. You are going to have motivation, encouragement to, I mean, act, okay? Yes, choose someone. So, um, if you want to know more about electric food, food that will charge your system, will charge you to raise your vibration, to help you raise your energy, all right, to be alert, to be smart, to think right, to think great, um, check on Dr. Sebi, okay, Dr. Sebi. Dr. Sebi talks about um, electric food. It seems that Sebi is spelled S-E-B-I. Yeah, Dr. Sebi. So check Check on um, Dr. Sebi Electric Food and you will know the food to take that is going to help, I mean, ch charge your system. Okay, great. As I said from the beginning that if I say what you take in is not only food, right? But it is about all the five physical senses, what you allow to your five physical senses to absorb in. Yes, it could be your ears. <coughs> right your ears what do you listen to if you listen to gossip you listen to the complaints of people you listen to discouraging messages all right it is going to quench your fire you can't do anything great in life there are people that are miserable if you listen to people that are miserable that are not taking any action not doing anything to change their life they will always drag you down pull you down to their level oh yeah i'm telling you right great and when you listen to encouraging stuff, things that, you know, will uplift you, that is going to propel you to take action. That is going to change the course of your life. So let's be careful of what we listen to as well. It's also food that we are taking in. It nourishes us. Yes, that is why when you are with negative people, you become very negative. But when you are with positive people, listening to positive things, positive vibe, positive energy, you become a positive person as well. Right? Yes. That's it. So, um, aside what you listen to, what you watch, these are gateways. Right? These are gateways. They are portals that are open, that allow information into our body. Things that can kill this body. Things that can uplift this body, help this body to rise to the top 
and be great in life, right? So what you watch, what are the things that you watch? Do you watch things that will demonize you, things that brings down your spirit, or you watch things that, you know, inspire you, things that um, when you watch, it helps you grow. It, it, it makes you feel peaceful. It makes you feel serene. It makes you feel great. Or do you watch things that are fearful? Do you want to live a fearful life? Or do you want to live a great life? That's it. You need to ask yourself this. And be careful of what you give to your eye. You feed your eyes with. Right? Your eyes are powerful. They are windows to your soul. So that is how the enemy gets into you. Right? So be careful what you watch. Watch only the things that you want in life. Listen to only the things that you inspire you, motivate you, help you to become a better version of yourself. Then, yes, when I'm talking about the senses, the skin is also part. The things you touch, all right? The things you touch, um, coming in contact with the opposite gender, right? Um, is the person you come in contact with, having physical contact with, is that, is, that, is that person working on himself or herself? Is that person God-fearing? Is that person meditating? Is that person exercising? Is that person doing things that is changing his or her life? Are they raising their vibration? Are they eating well? If they are eating well, then you know, everything is about energy and exchange of energy. So the people you come in contact with, be careful of the people you come in contact with or have physical contact with. This can raise your energy and can bring, drain you and bring your energy down and makes you a nobody. I'm telling you, right? Great. So the partner you choose is very much important. It can help you elevate and it can be your biggest downfall in life. Yes, choose someone. All right. So um, that is okay with the point one. The next point I will talk of is watch your thoughts. Yes, thoughts are powerful. And we cannot be positive all the time. Yes, negative circumstances are going to happen. There are times we're going to have the heartbreaks. There are times we're going to be disappointed. We're going to be discouraged. Business is not going to boom. We're going to love, uh, lose some loved one and we'll be grieving, we'll be in sorrow. But we should understand that these are the beauty of life. These things are bound to happen. Rejection, disappointment, boredom, they are bound to happen. And we shouldn't stay in that area or that place or in that circumstance for for a longer time staying there for a longer period of time is what causes problem is what um destroys us it's what brings us down all right we need to understand that as humans adversities are born to happen and we should turn adversity to our advantage when you are stressed you are depressed you are traumatized don't let such things stop you from doing your daily routines your daily duties in life i know it is hard but you got to push through that is what makes you strong right that is what makes you strong okay so negative things are going to happen negative thoughts are going to pop up don't live in there for so long the more you live in there for so long a time you are nursing such things and you are firing them you are fueling them and it will grow what you focus on expand you are what you give your attention to to focus more on the positive thought focus more on positive things whatever that happens Make sure you see positivity out of every negativity. And that is how you win in this life. That is how you change your life. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Yes, the words that you confess determines the life you enjoy. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. Your habits become your character. Watch your character. It becomes your earthly destiny. All right? Great. So you are shaping your life. I'm telling you, God has given you that power to shape your own life. Right. So watch it and I'll, you and you will be able to change your life for good. I'm telling you, chosen one. All right. So the third point is exercising, regular exercising. Exercising is, is very key. It, it, it builds us, makes us alert for the next day, mentally, physically, spiritually. It prepares us. All right. Emotionally, it, it empowers us. All right. So exercise, make exercise part of your life. It, it is very key. All right. So we've talked about three points, right? Three points. All right. So choosing your social cycle. Be careful of your, your social cycle. That is the fourth point. Your social cycle. 
Because if you are associating with five intelligent people, it is likely you are going to be the sixth intelligent person. If you are associating with five idiots, it is likely you will become the sixth idiot. So be careful of your cycle. Be careful of the people that surrounds you. Yes, if the, your, in your cycle, right, the, the, the group that you belong in, what the people you surrounded by, if you are the best in that group, I'm telling you, it is advisable to get a new group that will push you to become a better version of yourself. When that happens, you are in a cage. When you are doing better than everybody else around you, you are in a cage. You are in a wrong association and you need to find a new association of people that are doing way better than you, that are more informed than you, that are more educated than you, right? That are doing well in life. And I mean, make friends with such people. And I tell you, as scripture says, iron sharpens iron. So are they also going to sharpen you to become a better version of yourself. And by so doing, you see that you'll be changing your very life because of the associate that you um, choose, the cycle you choose around you. It is very important. Yes. The next, the fifth one, I would say is um, practice temporary voluntary celibacy. I say temporary voluntary celibacy because it shouldn't be something that is permanent. You're doing it to change your life, right? You're doing it to change your life. Um, God has created us to procreate, all right? To procreate like the sea sand so that life will go on. It is somebody that through that person, you have been procreated, all right? Great. And through that, there is life going on. There is existence. So it is a blessing that someone will pass through you. All right. But if you want to change your life, you're not where you want to be in life. And you realize that, no, um, being with the opposite gender, all right, are not helping you grow. It is draining you of your vital essence, vital energy. All right. It is time to stay off. And when you stay off, you, you, it, it, it helps you to focus more on yourself. Right. And it, it changes your way of thinking. If you are weak, you're going to be strong. If you are f filled with fear, you're going to be filled with courage. If you lack the motivation to get stuff done, you are going to be filled with the motivation to get stuff done. It is also going to help you to stay focused on your grind, on your purpose, on your mission, on what you're doing. Your dream line is even going to change. I'm telling you, it helps you to attract good luck into your life. Because many of these people that we mingle with, right, have bad energies, all right, and they contaminate our energy. So when you want to change your life, take some time to practice temporary voluntary celibacy, all right? And I tell you, it's going to help you. It's a very good thing if you really want to change your life. It is very helpful. Okay. Um, the sixth point is have the fear of God. Have the fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. As the book of Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says, right? The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Have the fear of God. When you have the fear of God in you, you will make sure you do things that will um, please God. And by doing things that will please God, God will open ways, God will open doors for you that no man can shut. I'm telling you right? God is going to protect you because there is going to be a time in each and everyone's life we're going to need God. You can't say you don't need God. We need God. We don't create ourselves. You got to believe that there is a higher power that creates all things and all things belongs to him. Yes, all powers belong to him. I'm telling you, right? So have the fear of God and let the fear of God guide your way and your life is going to have meaning. I'm telling you, chosen one. Yes, the seventh point is practice silence and stoicism. Oh, yes. Silence is very key. Silence in silence, you become um, innovative, right? Because when you are silent, it helps you to listen to your higher self, 
it helps you to face yourself. When you are quiet, it helps you to listen to the God that is within you, your God-like self, right? And you get inspiration from within. Whatever you're looking for is inside of you. It's not outside of you. So by focusing on yourself and stealing your mind, stealing yourself, making yourself still and poison, serene, you are going to find comfort, peace, inspiration, innovative ideas, creative ideas from within. I'm telling you. All right. And by being stoic, you know, um, means that, you know, you understand that adversities are going to happen. Life is rough and smooth. Yes, there are going to be tough times, challenges. All right. But these things happen to people and they overcame. So you too, you are going to overcome. You are not the first person. Right. Great. So inspire yourself, encourage yourself and don't complain. Don't be lamenting. Don't be murmuring. Right. If you want to complain, go on your knees. Let your challenge, your difficulty draw you more closer to God. The people you go and be complaining to, they will listen to your story, but they can't help you. If human sympathy will help us, if people can really, really help us. All right. I'm telling you, where we are now, we would have been way more. Right. But they, they will not help us. They will listen to our stories. They will listen to our flaws. They will listen to whatever. And before they, we know, they started to um, talk about us, gossip about us. And when we hear it, we don't like it. But God, when you learn to talk to God, he will not carry your matter and go be talking it to any third party. And again, the reason why you have to be stoic is that Everybody is dealing with something. Nobody has it all. We are all dealing with something, right? So if you are going through some tough moment, know that these two will pass, right? And you working hard to come out of it is the best option. Is the best option, right? Great. So that is um, with stoicism, okay? The eighth point is never compare yourself to other people because um, comparison, okay? Comparison is the thief of joy. Yes, comparison is the thief of joy. And understand that there are no competition in destiny. What is yours is yours. What is mine is mine. So focus on you, right? Remember and understand, life is an express road and overtaking is allowed. If all this are overtaking, let them go. Stay in your path, stay in your way. Trust the process, right? And keep being consistent, pers persistent, keep, I mean, persevering and keep forbearing your time. Is going to come. I'm telling you, life is by 10 by 10. If today it is someone's 10, remember your 10 too will come. I'm telling you, if God has blessed somebody in your neighborhood, it means God is in your neighborhood. He's going to visit you as well. If God has blessed someone in your family, it means God is in your family. He's going to bless you as well. If God has blessed some somebody among your friends, your friends, God has blessed them. some of them. It means God is so close to you. He's going to bless you. He's going to do it for you too. It, right in your workplace, if God has blessed somebody, remember that same God is so close to you and your time will also come. So focus on you. Focus on doing you. Focus on working hard as if all depends on you and praying hard as if all depends on God and leave the result for God to mark. After our hard day's work, effort, and whatever we do, we need to leave the result of whatever to God. This video I'm creating, at the end of the day, viewers can choose to watch or not to watch. I have to leave it for God. It is God that I will mark it. It is God that will help it to go viral, to go this, to go that. Yeah, that's it. All right? Great. So keep doing your best and know, understand also that the day you plant the seed is not the same day you are going to have the harvest. So understand that everything takes time. It takes time and season. All right. And um, it takes a longer time to build a palace than to build an ordinary house. Oh, yes. Okay. Whatever is going to last long is going to take long. Yeah, I'm telling you. Okay. So God is building character. God is helping you grow. He has you. Um, he has your best interest, okay? God is never against you. The ninth point, which I say is the important point, is focus on one thing. Focus on one thing. 
and find strategies, tactics, ways of doing the one thing better, more better, more, I mean, effectively. And when you do that one thing consistently, you're good at it and you break out or you break through. All right. And the breakthrough comes, the money comes, then you can use, you can diversify that money. All right. To work for you where money will be making money for you. And that is you change your, or you're going to change your life through that. So focus on one thing. When you scatter your urine, it's not going to form. You are going to lack focus. So focus on one thing, learn how to do it very well, and make sure you become an expert in it. You become the best in, 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 in that area. You brand something uniquely, all right? Yes, uniquely. And through that, your life is going to change, all right? Great. Um, the 10th point is you need to understand that there is no such thing as something for nothing. Whatever you want in this life, there is a price to pay. You need to give something to get something. It takes fish to catch another fish. If I want to catch fish right, right now, and let's say I want to use the hook and line, what do I have to do? I have to put some fish, small fish, at the hook so that that will attract it, will draw it. All right? Great. So you must give something in order to have something in return. So giving, the giving should be in the form of service. Ask yourself. What service can I provide to humanity, to society, the community I'm living in, the neighborhood I'm living in? What is it that they need? What is it that this society uh, really needs? You study around. What problem are they facing? Then you try to find solution to the, their problem. By finding solution to their problem, you are given something. And out of what you're given, maybe that society, they, they, they like some, that one particular food, but that food is not there. So you find ways to travel somewhere and bring such goods and come sell to them, all right? You are giving something to get something, to get money in return. That's it. That is life. That is life, okay? So you need to take action and you need to be a giver, giver of something. Give your ideas, give your wisdom, give what you made up of, your knowledge, all right? When you learn, teach, all right? I'm telling you, and that is going to take you all over the globe, all over the world. That is how you change your life. Yes, that is how you change your life. So remember to acquire knowledge, have something. We are all blessed with something. Everybody is blessed with something. Everybody is gifted with something. Find yours. Ask yourself, what am I good at? What do I love to do? What is it that if I'm doing, it is very easy for me to do and that's it. All right, great. The eleventh point is that you got to um, learn every day. You got to read, read every day. A reader today is a leader tomorrow. Yes, there are wisdom, there are knowledge in books. Books are going to inform you and let you know what to do and what not to do. Books are going to help to change your mindset, to change your behavior, to reprogram your life. And by so doing, you will see that you will change your life entirely. So read, all right? Read, learn. You can learn from a video on YouTube. You can learn some skill on YouTube. You can learn how to edit a video. You can learn how to use a particular software in doing something. And out of that, you, 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 you can screenshot it and you begin to teach as well. You are providing solution and you, you create it. Do something, right? Do something with your life, all right? And that is going to really, really change your life. The, the love, um, <clears throat> The 12th point is that listen more and talk less. Listen more. My water is funny. Listen more and talk less. All right? We have been given these two eyes and two ears for a reason. You listen more, you observe more, and you talk less. This is really, really going to help change your life. Most of our troubles are tongue troubles. Either we are too happy and we begin to expose ourselves to our enemies. Either we are too sad and we begin to complain, sell ourselves cheaply to people. Let's be careful of 
what we carry out there and what we say about ourselves and about others right this is going to really really help to change our life so you know these are the 12 points i believe you are blessed with this thank you so much thank you chosen one see you in my next video i'm out for now peace